Hey everybody, it's Lee H. Haywood, author of The Gods and Kings Chronicles. I'm bringing to you part two of my fantasy map making tutorial. If you miss part one, there'll be a link right up there at the upper right hand corner of the screen. Just go ahead and click on that before you continue on into part two. What I showed you in the first section was how to make the map you're seeing on the screen. Today we're going to create mountains. Now, you have a few options for doing this. One of the options is to use DeviantArt. If you go to DeviantArt.com and you search map, you're going to come up with all sorts of different brush sets that would work brilliantly for something that you want to use for yourself. If you really want to use it for commercial purposes, you really need to create your own brush set. So I'm going to show you how to do that in this tutorial. So let's start off by considering the landmass that we're working with here. When you look at it, there's really just a handful of places where I think mountains should exist. So one would be sweeping up through the center of the continent. One would be going down the right hand peninsula there and then around the lake at the north and the left hand peninsula in the south. Remember, mountains are the high point of the land. They create the continental divides and therefore they are also going to create where you have your major bodies of water as well. All right, now I'm going to start putting the mountains themselves. I would refer to these as Tolkien-esque mountains. These mountains are very much in line with what you would see in The Hobbit or The Lord of the Rings. I'm using a calligraphy hard brush while I'm doing this. I've set it to 10 points, and I am just drawing basically exactly where we had our lines originally. The next step in this process involves shading in the mountains. Uh, you want a dark side and you want a light side. The purpose of this is to sort of create an impression of depth within your map. No, this is not supposed to look photorealistic, but if you look at lots of the great maps that are in some of the great series, be it Tolkien or Martin or Sanderson, what you'll notice is they're pretty much in line with this. This is pretty typical map making 101. And it honestly looks very good on a black and white printed page. Um, this is what I use for the print edition of The Guardian. Once I have one side of the mountain shaded in, the next step is going to go and do some of the back shading. And it just creates a little bit more depth. So I'm shading very lightly on the back side and I'm kind of blending the mountains into their surroundings. Nothing overly fancy here. Um, but the finished product, and you'll see here a second when I zoom out, looks very decent. You add rivers and cities and labels in there, and you have a pretty good map. It's not overly busy, and it's going to be very satisfactory to whoever buys your book. They're going to understand where the mountains are. They're going to understand where the conflict zones. It's going to be very good for creating natural border. I'm going to show you another option, though. I took this photo when I was in an airplane flying over some mountains in the western United States. And when you look at these, you can see very clearly how light creates dark spots and it creates bright spots that really accentuates the depth of the mountain and it shows you where the mountains dive and where they ride. For the second part of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make more photorealistic mountains. Now, the first step in this process is to draw the spine of the mountain. I am using a chalk brush for this process. I've set it to five point. Uh, it's very fine, and I'm basically just creating some depth and some ridges. Um, this is very difficult to do. This is about my eighth attempt to actually get this right. Um, but what you'll see is when you actually got your line right, it suddenly becomes very clear where the mountain ridges are going to be and where the back of the mountain is versus the front of the mountain. Once I've finished this process, I'm now going to go and basically just mark it up. I'm marking what I would think is the shadow side of the mountain and I'm putting just depth and contour to it. This is again the same chalk brush. I've just widened out the point to about 10 points and I've also set the opacity at about 70 percent. I've now widened out my brush even more to about 20 points and now what I'm doing is I'm really hitting in the shading side. I'm creating depth here. This next process is me just adding more and more shadow. I 
I've now gone back to my fine black point and I'm adding darker, deeper shadows. People would look at these and think that these are rock falls or these are cliff faces. Now I'm going in and I'm mixing in the shading. For this, I'm actually using a textured brush. Uh, if you don't have a texture, good texture brush, get one. Go to DeviantArt, search textured brush sets. There's tons of them out there. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one you do. You just want something that honestly has a lot of slop in it. All right, we're almost there. Now here's the most important process. Remember I said, natural mountains really showcase the difference between the light side of the mountain and the dark side of the mountain. Well, what you're going to do here is you're going to go through with a white brush and you're going to put this as the top layer and you're just going to start to hit these very fine points of light along your mountain. And it doesn't look like much when you zoom in, but the effect is quite stunning when you zoom out and you take in the overall image. All right, folks, there you have it. You got three options to make your mountains. The first option is go to DeviantArt, download a brush set. It's without a doubt the easiest way, but it's not something you wanna do if you're gonna be using this as a commercial product. The second option is to create Tolkien-esque mountains. They look really good inside of printed material, specifically black and white print on cream colored paper. Uh, it's what I use for my print edition of my novel. The third option is to create the photorealistic mountains, but the thing to take into consideration is it's a tedious process, it takes a long time, but man oh man do they look good when you get them right. In tutorial number three, I'm going to show you how to put rivers and forests into your map. If you're interested in that, please click on the link. Also, my book has been released in audiobook format. If you're interested in listening to the first chapter, Click on that bottom link right there. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.